welcome to the first, well, technically this is the zero number, of the Clock Builder 2.0 Masterclasses. The reason why it's the zero version is because basically we're just going to talk about getting started with the builder. And in truth, because we're going to be focusing for the moment in installing from the click install for Windows, which is a very quick install for somebody who really has no basic understanding yet of how to go ahead and work with the uh, details of installing and running with a uh, common list on Windows. Uh, also, the fact that uh, well, when it comes to Windows, it's a little bit shaky. You actually need some additional DLLs to make things work well. So basically, we're going to use the one-click version. And uh, we'll start with that, basically. Uh, and so therefore, it's the version zero, because I'm going to be training you about that. And again, we'll talk a couple of things about the builder and uh, how we get the tutorials, which will change in first year versions to make it much, much, much easier. But for now, for now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start with our class zero. And hopefully, if I have time today, if not, a hey, Sunday or Monday, I'll work on the clog framework tutorial one, uh, where we'll go ahead and show the power of common lisp and the live image that makes common lisp what common lisp is. Okay, I'll speak about it. I'm already there. I, I want to tell you, we often find people discuss and talk about the idea that the REPL is the key to common lisp. It's not. It's the interactive programming for sure, but that's not it. What happens is, is that common lisp is really AI. Oh, yeah, okay, not exactly AI in the sense of modern day, which means they're going to make pictures basically that all look exactly the same, just with stupid poses that are different based on what you said. No, no, what happens is you have a conversation with your computer, and that conversation is with something that remains as persistent and alive, and that's it. That's exactly the key to common lisp. You're actually dealing with a live image that you're going to be having a discussion with. We're not going to talk too much about that, but I couldn't help it. I just love the subject and because of the fact it really, really works. It happens to be that that is the superpower. The fact that you actually have a live image, make changes to the image that is alive, poke, push, prod, everything else, and boom, all of a sudden things change. Okay, now I got you all hyped up on Common Lisp. So that's one of the reasons why I wrote Clog, because I wanted to be able to, in a modern way, when uh, not that there's anything wrong with it before, but it's something graphical, and I wanted to be able to work with Common Lisp and some of the projects that I actually have planned, uh, some which I certainly will be sharing with you over the coming years. Okay, let's get started, right? That, that was the whole point of this? Well, first of all, I'll get my face out of your face. Mm, okay, what do I do here? There's got to be some button that does this. Uh, oh, that's twice. Oh, one second. All right, now that I've gotten my face out of your face. Uh, let's start where we are. Clock Builder 2.0 Masterclass, Class 0, Getting Started with Builder. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about installing quickly on Windows. If you are not using Windows, then you just go to the Learn page, and there will be the information, essentially, how to do this on every different platform. Uh, there you go. See, Common Lisp, what is Mac? Windows 64. Now, this is actually doing a full Common Lisp installing for Windows, and I actually do recommend that method to go about doing this. However, we're still going to work, and I'll show you quickly how to get to the one-click version. Okay, it's a couple of clicks, two clicks. But either way, the, the Windows, Windows 64 version, Linux, and also Android using Termux, and I've got some videos in the clock extras about that, which, uh, which I've used. Uh, it really works very well, uh, which is pretty cool because you can actually test your applications on a mobile platform before you work on getting them onto the mobile platform in a more permanent fashion. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's go back uh, to where we were. Basically, good to know, all those that may not know it already, but probably do because you're actually watching and seeing me now, and that is github.com, Ravivatan, clog, right? That basically will tell you where to go. Everything that happens is always happening here. And like I said, this is the learn.md page, right? So mainly learn, right? There you go, learn.md, right? So there you go. There basically is our release information, everything else. Anyway, look at the comment list, etc. And of course, our releases. So if you go to the releases, the current release that we're talking about today is Builder 2.0. If you actually go down to Clog 2.9 Windows 64 zip, uh, well, this that we've actually downloaded, this is actually right here on the desktop, which I've cute and nicely made it look like the original Windows, uh, you know, uh, you know, going all the way back. And um, yeah, it's just as uh, limited to functionality as it was then as it is now, but it's still, nevertheless, puts me put this on one desk when I'm presenting to you. Okay. So let's get started. I just imagine, of course, I've clicked this and I've downloaded it here. And there we go. Let's get started. So again, if I want to go ahead and install this, I double click. Bum, bum, bum. 
Okay, now of course you're not going to stay with this because this is just basically just shows you what's inside the, the the file. What you can all do is drag this in and out, or you can use extract all, right? And but boom, 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 and you're ready to go. In this case, let's go ahead and extract it onto the desktop. Do, 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 do. Trust me, you're going to thank me afterwards when you notice I've been pausing this. <laughs> Windows is so slow. I'll never understand. If I actually do this from a command line, it actually takes like two minutes. But again, we're using what you've got no matter what, basically, because we're assuming you've not installed any kind of dev stuff. Okay, I'm pausing again. Uh, okay. Okay, done with my sweet potato fries. Finally, we're here. Okay. Ah. Uh, Okay, well, basically, this is, of course, desktop clog 2.0 Win64, which in it is the clog directory. And what we're going to do is basically we've got to make .bat. We've got to double-click that, and that is actually going to compile. Now, you're not going to download anything more. Everything's ready to go. But you're basically going to double-click make .bat, and what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and compile the entire system, which I, I wish it was easier than this because... It needs to know what director you're in, a couple, and whatever, whatever it is. But bottom line is, you got to do it. So make that bat. You run it, and pretty much in a minute or so, this will be over. <laughs> Trust me, it takes less time than that Windows zip. Oh, you got both. Okay. Anyways, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Do 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 do. Almost there. There we go. We're doing clog now. We're almost ready. Okay, clog tools, and that's. Last, I think, of everything here. That's the PowerScript stuff. Ba -ba! Yes, and of course, this makes a brand new, brand spanking new builder.exe. Now, I could just run it right this second, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that. Boom. Okay, so that basically is now, let's put it over here. It is now in my application bar. And therefore, anytime I want to play with clock now, I just have to go ahead and double click. And let's see what happens. Well, actually, it's not double click. <laughs> oh, well. So, okay. So, I think I ran two different versions of clock. Let's go ahead and let's close this one and get the other one. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, it probably didn't start. Okay, no problem. And by the way, the intention is to show you all the mistakes. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're good to go. So basically, we have Clog running here in a window. Now, it happens to be, you know, if once you get a little more advanced knowledge in Clog, you actually are capable of running this in a in a completely native application version called Clog Frame. And and of course, again, in really fancy, you can actually put together a little bit of C plus plus code and actually have it be completely native. If you want to be a little bit more advanced. You actually can cut out the use of web sockets and sockets all together and actually have a direct connection between the browser control and your your application. So there are many things you can do with Glog. I, unfortunately, time is limited as to everything I can do, but I can do quite a bit, and that's what we're going to be working on. So uh, basically, we've got ahead now. We've installed the builder.exe, and we put it on an application bar. So number three on our list is a word about Windows slow processing of ASDF files. There is some kind of bug. I, I tried edit, I tried debugging it, and I, when I have more time, I'll spend time on it. But I, I hate spending time on something that it's working, but just extremely ridiculously slow. So I'm actually going to go ahead. just want to show this to you, and it's important. And I will talk about a workaround because you're going to need this for the coming uh, well, not really the first tutorials. We're not. We're going to bypass anyways. Old project system, not a big deal. But let's go ahead. Let's do a center panel project, and let's say our new system is hello. Okay. Now um, you have a choice of where you want it to be. These are ASDF findable directories. So I actually asked the list image, where can I possibly put files that can be found? And one of them, and then this is not the common Lisp file that's in your home directory. Again, if you don't know about installing, you know, uh, uh, common list in general on machines, don't worry about what I just said. But the common list directory in the clog area that I can put it there, or I can put it basically um, 
Uh, oh, okay, I guess you know, let's change this. I make it all full screen so you can see what's going on. But that basically is the quick lisp uh, local projects directory. I put everything in this directory common lisp. Um, it's just very convenient, easy. Um, and uh, at some point we'll talk more about that kind of stuff. But anyway, bottom line is you can actually add directories here. Uh, and there are things that can be done to increase what's available to you in terms of uh, space on the hard drive for putting projects. But right now, I just put all my projects in the local project directory, which is called common lisp. So let's set that project project directory, load project. Now this is where the time happens again. <laughs> if you were on, on Mac, if you were on Android, if you were on Linux, uh, this comes up near instantly. But on Windows, I'm probably going to hit pause again since this seems to be a regular thing on Windows, pausing the video. Okay, half of it's up, the runtime system. Ah, there's the design time system. Okay, now we're just about ready to get started. Okay, uh, by the way, if you look at my time, it's because I also have other things going on. <laughs> Patients coming in, questions, things like that. Okay, anyways, um, we're back here, right? Uh, they, again, as you notice, like I said, it took a long time for this to come up. It, they do come up faster when it's already been loaded before the system starts. And there are various different things. It's true. However, like I said, it's ridiculously slow. Um, and again, it's only specifically on Windows. Um, I do believe I may have, in the believe it or not, in this little space we had, figured out what may be going on. I may have to do with permissions in the way that uh, text files are handled by Quick Lisp. So it may not even be coming from ASFD, but rather from Quick Lisp. But again, I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that, and hopefully by the next uh, dot version of this, we'll be, well, that's all gone and faster. But it doesn't really matter much. Um, it is what it is. But just a quick side. Um, you see this open external? Uh, I love doing this. I just want to show you what this is. I, I don't know it's off the topic exactly, but it's worth it. Once that's on, which by the way, in general, I can actually turn it on here uh, as a general feature. Uh, but basically what it does is it actually allows me, instead of just opening up, well, let's do something without it. Let's open up a text file. Okay. See, it's here. It's inside the actual, uh, our actual application, right? Meaning clog. Um, what's really cool about this, I can actually do it from here, open a new tab, and boom, we've actually moved it out to a browser tab. And this becomes really powerful because, of course, I can make different versions, different spelling. But I mean, obviously, it gives us a fairly desktop experience in a lot more ways uh, than before. Uh, and actually, this all uses a system that's called uh, Cloud Pop-Ups, which you'll, you'll find, uh, well, at some point we'll talk about it. Tutorial 22 has got some examples. And what it is is I, under the covers, I find I put together a way for you to be able to make pops to control them from your application. Uh, and uh, you're not going to be violating via any of the browser uh, policies. Okay. Uh, and of course, use it only for good, right? I mean, actually, kind of difficult to use it for bad, but, but use it for only for good, okay? Uh, anyways, uh, and then, of course, the same thing. I can do pop external to start it off that way. And boom, and of course the same thing when it comes to, um, you know, our our uh, our control panels and moving everything around and all this. Again, it's really cool to open it up externally because this way you can work with things a lot quicker and faster. So I'm just saying that from the beginning. Okay. Anyways, my whole point of this was to get you here, and then, which is where, which is here. Okay. So in addition to that, we went ahead. We put a word about Windows slowness. DR view. So, you know, again, you don't necessarily have to use a project directory. You can do Windows directories open up wherever you want, and you have access basically here to different files, right? Uh, as an example, the common list directory, remember I just told you? So um, basically in there, where's our project? Good question. Should be there. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, for all I know, I'll put it someplace else. I guess we'll have to look, take a look at that. Uh, either way, um, you can use the, 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 uh, this particular system also, the the uh, the the the, um, oh, the directory listings will also be able to go to files that you want, etc. Anyways, for now and for the cup coming tutorials, the first masterclass series, we're really actually going to be working with something else. We're going to be working with the Clog Builder REPL. As I mentioned, it's not really the REPL that makes that makes Comlisp amazing. It's the fact that it's a live image. So anything that you do at a command line, and in fact, let's say for example, you ran you ran the builder um, from Emacs or you ran it from a command line uh, from LAM, or you ran it from a command line version of anything for that matter, a uh, text version of anything, it's, you're all the same. You're, you're, everything is live. And we're gonna see more and more about that starting with the first 
of the various tutorials. Um, but we're going to talk about here the idea of how do we get things started, how do we run a tutorial here, so, and how do we edit a file in the tutorial, right? Um, that's what I want. Here we go. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Clog Ripple, how to run Clog. Oh, here I run. Okay, so now, so how to run it. So well, it's like this. Basically, by the way, this tells you which um, which package manage, which package you're in in Lisp. Don't worry if you know about what this is. That's what that learn page is all about, right? If you don't know that much about about uh, about about you know uh, about Common Lisp, I really suggest you go through. It's a very the Common Lisp tutorial. I have a single PDF version. You can go through one by one through these, um, and and it's going to teach you again, especially if you have some programming experience. You're going to very quickly be able to get up to speed. I actually did this for myself, by the way. There are times I had, you know, listen, I, I got to make a living sometimes. So I had to take off a break, uh, to take off a break for more time than I really had hoped. I woke that sadly in almost about nine months, I think. So I had to take a break from, from Clog and everything else that was going on. And uh, so, of course, when I get back into it, I, I need to be able to very quickly get back to a language and to a point where I was. So this worked really amazing for me. I literally went through my own tutorial and boom, I'm on top of my game again when it came to Common Lisp. So it really does work. It really helped me. Uh, maybe it helps you. If not, listen, uh, I've got my videos. And of course, like, look, listen, I, I'm, look, there are really amazing projects and, pro and papers and, and books and everything is available, full free books, right? Um, you know, reference books. If you're new to programming, go this way. New to Common Lisp, go this way. And of course, all the various different uh, tutorials that I have here as well um, and builder project examples and so forth. And we, but we're going to do this series coming up. We're going to talk about the Clog Framework tutorials, right? It's basically 35 different tutorials that pretty much tells you how to program the web the Clog way, okay? And we're going to, of course, be starting out with the first of these tutorials, right? Which, of course, we're going to see in a moment uh, how we get there and everything else. But like I said, so, so the learn.nd file is really your friend for Common Lisp itself if you are not familiar with it and so forth. Anyways, back to where we were. Again, so to get started, now, oh, uh, I, this is worth showing you. Again, I, how we get, and the mistakes are all going to be important for you to see, uh, is in the README file, of course, we talk about, you know, the various ways to install and everything else, and the point, of course, to learn ND files. But basically, um, the, uh, the oh, uh, one important thing, if I run in that REPL, update all this, that will, always, that if I run that file, right, then what happens is, and then I rerun make.bat, this will let us basically, you'll, that automatically will then upgrade to whatever the latest version of Clog is. So whenever you see me posting all this cool stuff, right, you just double click that, you just run the update all this, and then just double click that, and boom, you're going to be running the latest and greatest of Clog and all the new features, and I got a lot of features planned. I got a lot of features planned. Um, I don't want to start now tell you everything. Don't worry. I'll, 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 probably, I'll post it someplace, but I got some great things in mind. Um, everything, more visual tools, more ability to be able to work with databases, uh, lots and lots of ideas of, of ways to be able to interact visually without programming. That's that were really where I wanted to be when I started this whole project, having a product that let me do that, which Clog will do. Uh, anyways, like I said, that's the Clog update all this. But basically, right, um, is this run tutorial one. And there's, of course, more details. Listen, I, I wrote it, so I think it's cool. So it's all worth looking at. But this video will get us to where we need to be, which is run tutorial, okay, one, okay. I hit enter, and boom, there we go. You see, I hit, click, oh, there you go. See, it works. Now, of course, there's one thing we want to do, and that is, and it would be really worthwhile for us to be able to edit that file and play with that file. So what I notice, I went ahead and I maximized the Cloud Rebel Builder. This tells you where the source file for is for this. I, I will be making this easier to be able to work with tutorials. This one click idea is great. Um, I, I Somebody had mentioned it in a comment, and I, I, I paused over many of the moment, uh, and it was a great idea, and I did it, and I was able to do it. And so in the future, but you'll be able to use this to go exactly where it is. Um, like I said, it's a little more difficult to find stuff because it stuffs things all kinds of different places, um, the, meaning when that make that bad. But it works. Okay, so now in the meantime, um, new source editor. Okay, but yeah, let's let's not use that. Let's go ahead and let's turn on the open external tab and new source editor. Yeah. All right, load. Now what we can do here is just go ahead, all right, and let's pop that in 
and boom, there we go. We're exactly where we want to be. Now, you can customize, by the way, everything in the builder. So you go to options, right, and you go edit preferences.lisp, and you can basically, let's say you really don't like a, a light theme, you want a dark theme. Well, actually, let's let's just go ahead and do that. So this is, uh, let's go ahead and uh, unclick the terminal theme, right, and go like that. And let's go here. And I actually I'll just click in it and do evaluate form, right? Uh, oh, that's weird. That's weird. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see this. Um, well, what's going on here? Oh, I'm not really sure. Uh, let's. I don't know if it can work either. Okay, it will work the next time. Let's see here. Well, when I restart, it'll work. Ah, you know what? Uh, okay, well, okay, let's go ahead. I don't have time for this. Uh, the, like I said, in the future, we'll get it working better. Um, it does work, by the way. When I restart the file, you know what? Here, why not? We're doing this, taking the time for it. Let's go ahead and start the builder again, right? And I'll show you here, source editor. See, we got the dark theme. And let's go ahead with that, right? Uh, let's go ahead. Dun, dun, dun. Dark theme. I'm, and I'm not sure why the evaluate didn't work there, but it usually does. Okay, uh, nothing ever works the way you expected it to. But we actually have the entire source file already there, right? So if we can go ahead and light, load that up, and let's actually open this in a new tab. And let's go to where we were again. Da -da, block, 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 ribble. Let's go ahead and run tutorial one. Okay, so here we go. So we are where we are. Now, now we can basically get ourselves to the point. And the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead. We're going to actually go through. I'm going to go through each one of these tutorials, uh, or at least many of them. And I'm going to show you some really, really cool stuff that has to do with the way that Common Lisp works. Um, I, if, even if you are an aficionado, uh, you know, well, if you're an aficionado, you don't definitely need this. But if you're someone who even has used Common Lisp for a while, it's worthwhile watching how eval form, eval select, eval all. There, there's a clog extra about it. Um, and how pretty much you've got a running REPL like right here, um, which is pretty cool. I mean, I mean, even something as simple, for example, as like say selecting that, and I can run eval selection, and boom, I've actually run the program again um, like by making my selection what I run. But again, we're going to talk about all that and the really cool stuff that you can do uh, in really in tutorial one. Um, so I've actually showed you how to get to the tutorial. Right, basically by going ahead and grabbing the source from here, load, right, the so a source editor, right. Again, file load, going ahead and replacing this with that copied version of it. And again, you have to make it full. If you if it's if it's actually scrunched up like that, you'll actually get a space there in the middle. So of course it's not going to work when you paste it. There's going to be a space in the uh, the your the the actual path. But anyways, and we're really ready to go. We're done with this particular session. I know it's a little long. I try and be as quick as I can. Um, and so you might say this is uh, just getting us started, getting us informed, getting us where we are. This is class zero, right? And so this is not going to be all the rest of the examples will be a little more straight to the point. So you can just pause, work for them, everything else. But this really will get you started, get you where you need to be um, to be able to start working through the tutorials one through 35 and basically become a clogger and really be able to enjoy programming the web. I mean, honest, I, I know that there's people out there that really like HTML and JavaScript, and I'll tell you something, I, I don't know. I, it, for me, it just doesn't work. I want VB, I want Delphi, I want simple, easy stuff. I like to be able to just put down what I want and get it. It happens to be that, of course, as you advance as a programmer and when you're going to be doing multiple windows and bigger applications, VB is not the best. But truth is, you know, this when you want a tool that does everything from a VB-like, quick and dirty, get it done, get what you need, you want to be able to go from there all the way up to the most advanced and pretty much that can be done with Clog. In fact, everything you know about JavaScript till now, everything you know about HTML now is completely and totally still usable. In fact, this very first example when we talk about it, you're going to see we actually use some HTML in there to show that it's really no big deal. Create child will just create a clog object any place with any HTML that you want. And you can do things as simple as just execute JavaScript whenever you, wherever you want in response to events. I mean, you pretty much have the best of every world with clog. 
Um, and even if you just use clog to be able to like, let's say you did everything in, you know, Angular and, and, uh, and you set everything up, whatever you wanted, right? And then you went ahead, the one thing you want that when a person goes to your page that they can go ahead and click a button and it's going to server side, do this and this and this. I mean, you, that's a pain in the neck to do that with, even with Node.js and all this. This is like literally anything you want. You give it an idea on your page, and you just associate an event on the on the on the, on, the, on the, your 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 common list side, and boom, <laughs> it's there. It's done. Anyway, there's lots of stuff to learn. Lots of stuff to go through. We'll be hitting all that thing. Uh, anyways, uh, it's been really amazing. I will see you next class.